Are you searching for Jesus Christ? Are you praying but nothing is happening? Are you seeking but you're not finding? There must be a reason. Uh, because the Lord said that when you seek me with all your heart, your soul and your mind, I will be found by you. Knock and the door shall be opened. Seek and you will find. Ask and it shall be given to you. Now there's a fundamental aspect that people seem to miss. Um, and I think it's to do because this world hardens everyone's heart. Let me explain to you what I mean. When I first became uh, born again, I was so filled with wonder uh, for Jesus Christ because of, because of the Holy Spirit and the healing of, of my long-term depression. It was so amazing and, and instantaneous uh, that I immediately thought in my own mind, through my own thinking, um, that everyone at the church where I was going must have been living uh, in that wonder and that, that splendour and that peace all the time. How wrong I was. I soon discovered that not everyone who says that they are a Christian is a Christian. And there's a lot of people that say that they are born again and they're not. Um, I spoke to a second-hand car dealer one day on the telephone and um, he said to me, um, I'm, not, uh, I, I'm not a second-hand car dealer. He said, um, you know, I, 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 I um, sell aeroplanes. He said, I just sell cars on the side. I said, so you're a second-hand car dealer then? Um, and the conversation progressed and somewhere along the line I said something about born-again Christians and he said, oh, I joined them once. Now you don't join the born-again Christians. It's through Jesus Christ that you become born again. You can be told by your priest, you can be told by whoever you like that you are born again, but you are not. Jesus Christ decides whether you're born again. Now, the point is this. Whenever anyone's in trouble, what do they do? They pray to God. When they're not in trouble, they don't bother praying to God, and they don't mean it. But when they're in trouble, they pray to God, and they mean it for themselves. They're feeling for themselves. Now let me put this to you. Jesus Christ felt for us, not himself. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he pleaded with the Father. Father, if there's any other way, but you will be done. And his sweat was falling like drops of blood. He was terrified, but he went ahead willingly. And he suffered all that agony for us. Now anyone out there who thinks they're tough, Go back in your mind to the last time you stubbed your little toe and you hopped around like a big baby holding your foot. If you could have given your little toe a bottle like you'd feed a baby to make the pain go away, you would have done it because the pain is so intense. Well, imagine that pain in your little toe throughout your entire body. Type into the internet, um, mechanics of crucifixion and read what it feels like to be crucified. Jesus Christ went through an intense agony and he didn't think about himself. He thought about you by face, by name, just you. Whoever you are now, he died for you. He didn't think about himself. Do you think about his pain? The film The Passion of the Christ, a fantastic film, because it made many people come to Christ because they thought about his pain. And when you feel for Jesus, you're reciprocating what he felt for you. Do you feel his pain? If you feel his pain, you're feeling for him. And when someone feels for you, when you're in trouble, you appreciate it. And we are made in the image of God. So, if you want God to reciprocate for you, isn't it time you felt for his pain? Think about it. In the name of Jesus.